Hello, I'm Peter. Thanks for joining me today as we talk about a recent paper describing the only known femur of Sahelanthropus chidensis. Before we get further into the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Sahelanthropus chidensis was discovered in 2001 by an international team of scientists. They found the bones of this species in the Djurub Desert of northern Chad. The primary specimen was an adult cranium which probably came from a male, as you can see pictured here. And although it is fairly complete, the cranium is heavily distorted by the process of fossilization. And as you can see, there are all sorts of cracks and fractures running through the skull. So although it's complete, it is quite distorted. In 2002, the team published a description of this cranium and some of the dental remains which had been found alongside of it in the journal Nature. But interestingly, they didn't really go into the deposition of the fossil or the taphonomy very much at all. Listen to this sentence from that paper. All hominid specimens were found in the Torosmenala anthrocotherid unit and come from a paralocustrine sandstone. In 2008, Lebetard et al. published a paper trying to date the Sahelanthropus chidensis remains. They did so by dating the anthrocotherid unit, and they found that it yielded an age of about 7.04 million years. However, not everything was quite as it seemed, and in 2008, Alan Bovline published a paper in the South African Journal of Science taking issue with the earlier characterization of the site. Bovline was in charge of all of the excavations happening within the Chadian Desert at the time, and he pointed out that Sahelanthropus chidensis had not been found within the Anthrocothid unit as the previous authors had claimed, but instead was found exposed sitting on the surface. Bovaline said this, Neither of these fossils was found in situ. Tumai, that's the nickname of this cranium, was picked up from a land surface comprised of loose sand. And this obviously raised questions about the dating of the find. In 2009, Bovaline and Watt released a paper in the journal Anthropology, and they had several groundbreaking announcements. First of all was the fact that a femur had been found in association with the Sahelanthropus cranium, which nobody had known about outside of a very small circle of scientists up until this time. Secondly, they announced more about the taphonomy of the Sahelanthropus site and provided pictures of the site showing the skull and some other bones all laying in the desert sand where they had been first discovered. And what they found was that the Sahelanthropus cranium had in fact been found in association with all sorts of other mammal bones laying exposed on top of this sand dune. They noted, whereas the other fossils at the site are separated from one another and scattered at random with no concentration of large specimens, the skull of Tumai was part of a dense group of fossils. They said, at the time of discovery, the skull was positioned to the northeast of this assemblage of bones, which was aligned in two parallel bands. Their photographs of the site are a key part of their evidence. They show that there were a bunch of different mammal bones which were arranged in lines along the site and that the skull was positioned close to one end of these piles of remains. They also noted that although the skull showed equal amounts of erosion on both sides, it had been found with the left side of the skull laying down. And so they believe that the skull must have been turned over at some time in order for both sides of it to have been equally eroded. These features, this odd conglomeration of bones and their linear arrangement, together with the fact that the skull must have been moved at some time to produce the erosion pattern seen, caused Bovelin and Watt to come to a surprising conclusion. Perhaps, this was a burial. Now obviously most of these bones didn't belong to the same individuals. 
there were at least five different known Sahelanthropus individuals, and there were all sorts of mixed up bovid bones and equid bones, and they belonged to a hodgepodge of different creatures. So it seemed that someone had collected bones of different creatures and buried them all together in a certain site. Even more interesting, Bovline and Watts said that the orientation of the bones was directed towards Mecca. If this is more than just the product of chance, it appears that an early Islamic traveler through the region found a variety of bones exposed in the desert and out of respect collected them, thinking that they belonged to a single individual and buried them in the desert. That's a very interesting story and obviously fascinating if true. But what we do know for certain is that Tumai and the bones associated with it were not found in situ in the Anthrocothid unit. They were found lying exposed on the surface of the desert sand. For a long time after that, we heard nothing more about the discovery of this important femur. But finally, in 2018, Nature published a news article by Callaway, who interviewed a scientist named Bergeret. And Bergeret had some experience with this femur, because it and some of the other bones found at the site in Chad were shipped to Poitiers University in 2003. Bergeret, while a graduate student at the University of Poitiers, had actually found this bone among the collection of animal bones from the site. In 2020, Bergeret and some colleagues published on the bone in the Journal of Human Evolution. At that time when they published it, they remarked that they no longer knew where the bone was being stored. They admitted in the paper that their analysis of the bone was preliminary and that they had only had a brief time to study the femur. Their preliminary analysis reached some interesting conclusions. First of all, they found that there was no way to actually tell the age of the specimen. Usually we can tell the age of a bone by looking at the epiphyses, which are the growth plates on either end of a bone. But in this case, both of the epiphyses were missing, and so there was no way to deduce the age of the specimen. They also found that there were some markings on the bone consistent with scavenging by carnivores. Hominin femora are often very similar to the femora of some other animals. Uh, most specifically, felids can sometimes have femurs that are very similar to those of hominins. And so this paper explored that possibility considering the bone was found you know, sitting out in the open with other mammal bones. So there was not necessarily a direct connection to Sahelanthropus. But their study of the bone revealed some anatomical features that didn't make sense if the bone did come from a carnivoran or a felid. They said this, in terms of size and shape, the external morphology of the shaft is closer to that of the common chimpanzee than to modern humans, gorillas, or orangutans. This is most evidently the case when we consider the anteroposterior curvature and the cross-sectional morphology of the shaft. Their analysis pointed out a variety of different characteristics which seem to link this femur more closely to uh, arboreal apes like chimpanzees than to hominins. This preliminary study pointed out that if this femur did in fact belong to Sahelanthropus, then it seemed to indicate that Sahelanthropus chidensis might not have been a biped after all. But they once again said that their results were preliminary. So thankfully, we've had further and more detailed study of these bones and some others that was published quite recently, the 24th of August. This study is by Daver et al. And it was published in the journal Nature and it's entitled Postcranial Evidence of Late Miocene Hominin Bipedalism in Chad. The paper describes three hominin remains, a left femoral shaft, which is the shaft which had been published about by that previous paper, and then two only, one from the right side of the body and another from the left side of the body. All of these had been found with that uh, cranium in 2001. Now, although these bones were found within a mixed pile of bones, it seems at least reasonable that they belong to Sahelanthropus chidensis. Why exactly? Well, because we can tell from their morphology that they are very similar to the bones of other 
great apes. And since Sahelanthropus stradensis is the only great ape known at this site, it seems likely that they belong to that same species. This paper explores some interesting features of the femoral shaft, and in particular some affinities which it has to Aurorin tugenensis, another very ancient hominin femora, and some of the later hominins as well. The paper went so far as to state that overall the external morphology of TM266 does not differ from Aurorin tugenensis, and both are similar to the condition seen in later hominins. Study of the femoral neck indicated that it was anteroposteriorly thin, which is a feature seen in other hominins and is probably a feature that is useful in bipedal locomotion. Cross-sectional studies of the femur looking at the shape have observed that there are some affinities to later hominins. In particular, when we look at the subtrochanteric, so that is right at the very top of this particular specimen, beneath the greater trochanter, what we find is that it actually falls within the range of Australopithecines. And then when we look down more in the middle of the shaft, at the location called the mid-shaft, and look at the outline there, what we will see is that it falls actually pretty close to the Australopithecine cluster and perhaps within the range of some early homo. The study also measured the thickness of the cortical bone, which is basically the stronger portion of the bone which overlays that spongy bone inside. And the cortical bone allows for strengthening and it's important to observe which portion of the femur has more development of the cortical bone because that'll tell you where the stress is being placed. And interestingly, the patterns of cortical bone thickness follow those of Australopithecines and early Homo. These and other features described in the paper seem to indicate that this femur has adaptations to bipedalism. So all of this is very interesting, right? Because this femur seems to indicate that there were bipedal hominins living whenever this femur was deposited, but it also seems to align with the evidence that we had from Tumai, the Sahelanthropus cranium, because that cranium had a fairly centrally placed foramen magnum. What I think is concerning here is that this study comes to the completely opposite conclusion of that by Bergeret and Maccarelli and some others in 2020. Now, they did state in their study that it was a preliminary analysis and that we needed deeper evaluation. But I think it is very interesting that these studies reach completely different conclusions when they looked at different characters. And this might tell us something about the mosaic nature of the bone, that it shares features with later hominins, but also with chimpanzees. Some scientists have noted that it's rather odd that the authors of this study have not directly replied to this 2020 study because it seems that that would have been the appropriate thing to do and I hope we see further dialogue between the members of these different studies to kind of clear up how exactly they reached contradicting conclusions. Besides the femur there was also the left and the right only and they are very similar in size and shape and the authors raise the possibility that they come from a single individual though we cannot be certain in any manner of that. Perhaps the most striking feature is the curvature of the ulna. As you can see, these only have very distinct curvature to them in terms of the shaft. It looks uh, like a big bend in the middle of the shaft there. And that is something, once again, that we see in arboreal creatures. It's an adaptation to arboreal locomotion. It also seems to be a developmental feature because as the brachialis muscle in the forearm is used, it continually places stress on that bone and seems to modify it into that curvature over time. So let me give you my thoughts on the paper. First, I think it is likely that these bones belong to Sahelanthropus chidensis. The fact that they are clearly hominin and that Sahelanthropus chidensis is the only hominin known at this site indicates that the simplest explanation would be that they do indeed belong to the same species. 
So overall, I'm very excited to hear more and see some communication between the authors of this paper and the 2020 paper to kind of resolve some of the conflicting points. And I'm excited to see what we learn in the future about Sahelanthropus chidensis. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to keep up on hominin news, please like and subscribe.